Check, 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 check. Thank you, Lord. I'm kind of running today. I was hoping that that package would come in, but all right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Impact Christian Center. I'm Pastor Daryl. This is my associate Lake. Good morning. My associate Paul. Good morning. And we're glad to be coming to you on this beautiful Thursday morning. Uh, we're kind of running in today because uh, a lot going on this morning, but praise God we're here and Jesus is alive. God's still on his throne. And what a great service last night. Yeah, it was awesome. And it was man. powerful. God was. Good. I mean, it was a move of the Holy Ghost yeah. again. And you notice it's different. Every service is just, yeah. there's just a difference, you know, mm -hmm. different atmosphere or different, not atmosphere, but different, uh, you know, it's just different. Every every service mm -hmm. is different. You don't quite know what's going to happen. So. Right. But uh, I like that. I like, I like the, you know, if everything was just, you know, routine and scheduled and all that stuff, that, that makes it boring, you know. Yeah. Um, some people like that because it's safe. Mm. But uh, <clears throat> Jesus never called us to be safe. I think, it too, it, it, it gets our expectancy level up. Yeah. Because you come not in here not knowing what's going to happen, but you're expecting something to happen. Yep. Mm. So yep. it, it, it just brings <coughs> up our expectancy level, you know, when you walk in the doors. And the, yeah. Because I always walk in and I go, okay, God, what are you going to do tonight? Yeah. You and know? yeah, and we had, uh, you know, Dana uh, sang last night. She did a great job. Awesome job. Yeah, great yeah, singer. She, she did a great job, and and uh, we're excited about all that God is doing. Um, we've been talking about uh, imagination, and we're going to continue on that. About you know, um, you know, the imagination is such a vital part of our human existence. You know, the Bible says now abides faith, hope, and love, but faith has to have something to work on. Right. And the imagination is the picture that your faith works on. In other words, faith has to have a picture to create. Mm -hmm. It has to have an image. It has to have something that it's working on to build. And because the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And so your faith, in order for your faith to go into action, it has to have a picture. It has to have something that it's looking at, that it try, that it goes into motion to create. Um, and faith, faith begins to create the very thing that you see inside of you. And that's why the Bible says that, uh, that God does exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, or you could say ask and think. Um, because your faith is what you're asking for. It's what you're believing for. It's what you're striving towards. But your hope or your imagination is the thing, the picture that you see that, you know, the Bible says we're saved by hope. Mm. And it says, you know, the Bible says it this way. It says if a man hopes for something, it means he doesn't have it yet. We don't hope for something that we currently have. In other words, if I, if I have this Bible in my hand, I don't hope for it because I've got it. But if I don't have this Bible, and, and I'll, you know, a funny little story is that um, this little Bible that I have here, I have a ton of Bibles. Most of them are big like lakes, or I have this huge Dake Bible. Um, but I wanted a little <coughs> preaching Bible that I could have um, to preach mm -hmm. out of. And I had a picture in my mind. I had a, I had a, in my mind, I could see the Bible that I had. I could right. see myself holding it. I had an image of it. And then... Um, what was funny was is that I couldn't find one. I went online. I went everywhere. I went to uh, Mardell's, and I couldn't find the Bible that I wanted. I wanted a certain type of, of Bible. You know, when you open it up, that it, it's like, see how it, it's kind of nice, and see how it, it mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to explain, but like those little cheap ones, they don't, they don't fold yeah. like that. You know, it's got to have certain, you know, uh, binding in here and all this stuff. But I had a hope. I had, a, I had an image of what I wanted. And I could see it inside of me, but I didn't have it. I couldn't find it. And so my faith was looking for it. I had an image, but now my faith was now starting to look for it. And I was started, I went to Mardell's. That was my faith in action. And I, you know, looked there, couldn't find one there. I went online, I couldn't find one there. So then um, finally one day I was walking through the, the foyer or walking through the, the, that little uh, uh, 
atrium there at, at Calvary where the bookstore used to be. Mm -hmm. And Betsy was in the bookstore. And so I went over to her and uh, I said, Betsy, I said, you know, and I started explaining to her what I was looking for. And she said, well, I don't have anything like that. She said, but you know what? I can probably find it for you. But um, I was explaining the image that I had inside of me to her of what I was wanting. But because I could see it on the inside of me. Well, then she went and she got this and she ordered this and got this Bible for me. Mm. And, you know, and when it came in, you know, I just went over and paid for it and got it. And, and, uh, but I had the image on the inside of me and then my faith began to pursue it. My faith began to create it, but I had the image of it. But now that I've got it in my hands, I don't have to have the picture on the inside of me anymore right. because I have the substance. I have, yeah. I have the very image of the thing that I'm hoping, that I had hoped for. Mm -hmm. So my faith, but my faith gave substance to this. And that's why the Bible says the just shall live by faith is that everything I do, I pursue it by faith. But I'm not pursuing, I'm, you know, this is where people sometimes get themselves in trouble is they have so many different things that they're trying to, to believe for or trying to get and all that. Um, and they don't get any of them because your faith never goes towards anything. It just, you, it literally what the enemy does is he scatters you. He gets you scattered in all these different directions and you might need a new car and you might need a new house and you might need a new job. You might need, you know, healing. You might need this. And, uh, but your faith doesn't ever tackle any of them. Mm. And so then I learned, uh, I, I started learning a long time ago that that was a tactic that the enemy used on me. And I know if he used it on me, then he used it on other people. When I first started learning about faith, I had so many things that were wrong in my life that I wasn't getting any of them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I was trying to believe God for all of this stuff and nothing was happening. When I learned that I focused my faith and focused my imagination, focused my hope, and focused God's love on one thing, and then went after that one thing, not that I ignored, not, not that I denied that these other things were going on, but by my faith being scattered, I wasn't getting any of them. Mm -hmm. Well, and you see this in Samuel when David fight, steps out to fight the army and fights Goliath. He didn't deny because there was an entire Philistine army standing there. But he said, I'm going to take you on first, and then I'm going to take then on I'm your brothers. Then I'm going to take, yeah, exactly. And he stepped out and said, I'll take on the big guy, and then I'll take care of these little guys afterwards. But he didn't try to fight the entire Philistine army at one time. He, he put all of his attention on Goliath, took him down, and then he conquered the rest. And you know what I love about that story is that he picked the biggest dude yeah. Yeah, to begin <laughs> with. Oh. He didn't try to conquer the little dude, then take on Goliath. He's like, all right, which one's the biggest one? All right, you? All right, I'm taking you. Yeah. He picked the biggest guy, and then if you notice in that story, he didn't have to fight the brothers. Yeah. Right. When he defeated Goliath, all the other rest of the army fled. Mm. The enemies fled. When they saw his faith overcome that biggest dude, all the smaller dudes took off running. Right. You know, um, and that's the thing in our life is that what happens is, is we have so many different things, and so our, our, our faith and our hope is and our love it's scattered and we're not getting anything accomplished because we're looking at so many different things yeah that's good whereas if we will take and just not that i'm denying that they're there i just i'm not focusing on them right now i'm focusing on this one thing mm -hmm. and i'm going to start using my faith on this one thing and i'm going to believe god i'm going to i'm going to use my hope i'm going to use my imagination and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to imagine myself, you know, with whatever it is that I'm believing for. And then I'm going to start using my faith to get it. When that, when I do that, then now I start moving towards healing that one thing. When you get that one thing, you'll realize, oh, wow, everything else is kind of just taking care of itself. Right. But if you're, and if you're looking at everything else, though, I think the reason why it's an issue is it becomes overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It overwhelms you. And then it causes you to quit. Yeah. Uh, and then ultimately you don't accomplish anything because you look at all the issues, it overwhelms you, and then you just give up and you don't And your faith anything. gets overwhelmed. Yeah, right. And it gets, it gets hard too because you've got so many faith projects. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to believe for this and this and this and this and this. And you don't accomplish anything. And of you're them. not accomplishing nope. anything because you've got so many faith projects on the burner. Yeah. Rather than just having one particular thing to believe God for. Okay, let's do with this one. 
then we'll move on to the next one and the next one you know and you can basically you can prioritize you know which is yeah you, you know what i'm saying you know which one which one you're believing god for that and that's something that i'm having to that i'm working through even right now is that as a pastor we've experienced tremendous growth yes tremendous growth but with that growth is all of these different areas now coming mm -hmm. and i used to you could ask i never would forget anything because I, you know, and I never operated by a, by a schedule or, or a calendar or making notes to myself. I've never had to do that because, you know, up until this point, you know, I really didn't need to. But now I've got so many different things coming from so many different directions happening now that uh, I thought I was busy before. Yeah, it, yeah, that it's, it's, <laughs> it's a whole nother animal. And I've got different projects coming from different directions. You know, we got a bus thing that's going on. They're out there painting the bus. I've got a men's meeting that's, you know, now springing up. I've got women's meetings that's going on. I got, you know, the, 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 the uh, women's meetings on Friday nights. We got a men's, you know, men's this. We've got Wednesday night service, Sunday morning, <laughs> daily breads. You know, I've got all this stuff coming at me now. And if I'm not careful, you know, you can get so busy about Christianity that you miss God. That you miss God. Yeah. Right. In other words, there has to be that time where I still come apart and shut everything off and spend my time with the Lord. Oh, you have to. You have to. You have to. And get yourself focused and then deal with what's right now. Yes. Um, you know, we're right now, and see people don't see that too, the administrative side. I'm doing all of that. You know, Lake's starting to help pick up a lot of that, but like, you know, we're dealing with this, this easy tithe app and all this stuff and, you know, the insurance and all this stuff that, that I have to deal with in the office that, um, and I've got all of these animals and now I'm, I'm having to build a computer, you know, all this stuff, right? And I'm, I, and what happens is, is that you can get so many different things that you can get overwhelmed and, and not realize, okay, I need to focus on one. Mm -hmm. I need to focus on one task and I need to knock that out and then go to the next task. Right. So then, you know, like this Easy Tide Plus thing that we're working on where this app will be awesome. You know, we'll have our own church app. People will be able to log into it, all that stuff, you know, check their giving, all that stuff. You know, I'm, I'm right now, that's what I'm really working on, trying to get that done. Mm -hmm. But, um, and even in that, I'm using our, imag my imagination has been working. When, when Stephanie first started telling us about it, Man, I had all of these images in my mind right. start coming to me of all the stuff we could do with this thing. Right. And I was like, ooh, this is going to be amazing. Then I tried to set it up. <laughs> and then you start running into all the technical difficulties and all that stuff. But my faith is now working to get that done. Mm -hmm. mm. That's where my faith is. My faith is working. See, faith is your works, what you do. That's your faith in action. Faith is an act. And so now my faith... Right now, my faith is believing and working towards getting this Easy Tithe app thing done, getting this computer built. You know, I've got my faith on some different things. Plus, my faith is on getting ready for Sunday morning. Yeah, on top of that. On top of that, right. preparing the sermon for Sunday morning, which I don't wait till Sunday at 1015 to prepare <laughs> for the service at 1030. I start the mo Sunday night when, or Sunday afternoon when we leave church. You know what I'm doing? I'm already starting to make notes for next Sunday. Yeah. Right. You know, and then I'm, you know, I go back and I listen to the message. You know, Crystal likes to joke. She's like, oh, you like to listen to yourself, huh? But I'm going back and I'm listening to what I said because sometimes I say things that I'm not even realize what I said. Yeah, I think that's true, you know, with all of us here that once we get done preaching, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean I'm even working on, even when I'm preparing, I'm working on and I'm praying, okay, God, what do you want to do the next time I'm up yep. there? Exactly. Yeah. And also, this is one thing I do. When I'm done preaching on a Sunday morning, I go back and I critique what I said and say, did I say anything? And then I go find scripture and say, did I say anything that's not found in God's word? Mm. Right. Because if I did, I'm going to, the next service, I'm going to correct it. Because we're still human. We're still fallible. Absolutely. So you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm up here on purpose saying things, but you understand mm -hmm. sometimes you say things in the heat of the moment and, you, you know, just comes <laughs> blowing out of you and you're like, I've done it. I know. I don't know if you have. I've done it before, where I've said that and going, "Ooh, where's that at in the Word? <laughs> is that in the Bible? You know, is this something that's scriptural?" And you know, something will come blowing out of you, and then I'll go back and I'll, I'll, you know, not that 
I'm doing it on purpose, but you understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So I'm going back and I'm studying out. All right, I'm going to study this out, Lord. Show this to me in the Word so that way I know. Because the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. mm. So you've got all these different areas you know, and in your life, you've got your job, you've got your kids, you've got to take care of your husband, you've got to take care of your wife, you've got all this stuff that's going on. And if you're not careful, you can have so many things going on that you never achieve that dream or that hope or that imagination that you have in your heart. Well, and ultimately, it gets you offended, I think. This, but the ultimate goal that Satan's trying to do there is he overwhelms you, you don't receive, and then you get offended at God, you yeah. never try again. Um, Ooh. And, you know, I've seen that in my own personal life is where offenses try to creep in. The only area offenses really try to creep in is in that area of, you know, I'm working a job <clears> at <throat> night, plus in the morning I'm working at the church, trying to prepare. And then that's where offense tries to come in when I'm overwhelmed saying, you know, they don't respect you. They don't do this. And these thoughts come up. You know, you're doing too much. You're working too much. And Satan tries to sow offense, to sow discord in my life when I'm overwhelmed. Um, and that's when I have to change my focus to yeah. what is my main purpose, what is my main vision, because without a vision, you perish. And the Lord just showed me something when you were talking, is, is, and because I've been studying Mark again. In Mark chapter 4, I was actually studying it out today, and there's, I was seeing some stuff in there that, you know, I've seen it, but I hadn't seen it. But Mark chapter 4, verse number, four, uh, verse number uh, 16, it says, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. I'm not, I'm, for, I'm sorry. Verse 18, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Mm. They're hearing the word. You know, they're believing. They got all this stuff, but watch this. Such as hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. See, that's what we're talking about today is that you might be trying to believe God for, you know, but all these other things are coming in, coming in and what are they doing? They're choking your faith out. They're literally stifling your faith and choking it from doing what it is that it will do. Well, and Jesus said it this way, don't be overly anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself, worry about today. Sufficient, Sufficient right now. Sufficient is <laughs> for today. Sufficient today is the evil that you're facing today. Right. In other words, what you're facing today is sufficient. Now, he did not say you don't make plans, that you don't prepare, that you don't, you know, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be, for, you're supposed to have foresight. You're supposed to look ahead and see, you know, right. if this comes, this, yeah. what do I do here? You know, that kind of stuff. But he, what he was saying there is don't get so caught up in what if and what's going to happen and what if this works and what if this comes and what if this doesn't work and what am I going to do here and how's this going to happen? And what if this person does this and what if that? You can get so caught up in all of that that you stop using your faith for what you, what's right in front of you. Right. You know, David could have got so caught up in the army that was on the other side of the mountain that he didn't focus on Goliath. Right. You see what I'm saying? What if David had went down into that valley and tried to fight the entire Philistine army by himself? Mm -hmm. He'd have been defeated. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way he would have defeated that entire Philistine army. Right. You know, and so, well, you know, people get off. Well, God would have been with them and done something supernatural. Okay, there's, okay, all right. There was thousands of them out there. At some point, he would have been defeated, mm. you know. And so what did David do? He focused on Goliath. He focused on the thing that was right in front of him and defeated that first. And that's, I think, important for us is that we have to defeat the giants that are in front of us. The giant that is in front of us right now, what mm -hmm. is it today that is right in front of you that is your biggest thing that you need to overcome? Mm -hmm. What is it? And then face that giant and, 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 and come against that thing with the Word of God, with your faith, with your hope, with your love. Come against that thing with all of the, of the things that God has provided and defeat that thing that's right in front of you then worry about whatever giant's behind him. But what happens is, is we're so concerned, you know, and, and, you know, there is a limit. I'm trying to say this the right way. Your faith is at a level right now. Right. Your faith is like a muscle. Now, I can't go out right now and bench press 325 pounds. Right. Because my muscles aren't there. Now, it doesn't mean I don't have muscles. 
It just means my muscles have not been used enough to where I could go bench 325 pounds. Mm -hmm. But you know what I can bench? I probably bench 120, 25, you know, <laughs> you're laughing. I can bench 125, okay? So what do I do? I don't sit there and try to bench 325 pounds because my, my arms won't hold it up. It yeah. won't sustain it. I can get it off the bar and then that's it. Boom, it's on me and it's killing me. You can definitely bench more than 125. But, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. 200 pounds, 250, yeah. whatever, you know, whatever I'm benching. Yeah. You know, but that's what I'm saying. So let's say I can only bench 125 pounds. I'm not going to go try to bench 325 yet. Right. You know, but how many times have we went to the gym, you know, and all those guys are walking around, you're like this, and then all the girls are walking around, and, and the girls are, like, yeah, bigger I, than you? I've had it before at the gym where I'm in the middle of doing bench, you know, and I look over, and there's a little girl over there, you know, small little thing, benching more than me, <laughs> right next to me, and I go, oh, man, yeah, <laughs> this is embarrassing. But how many times have we done that? We go to the gym, you know, we're around all these people, and what do I do? I grab that big old thing, shh, grab another one, shh grab another one, shh, go to the other side, grab one, shh, put it on there. I've got this, the bar is bending from all of this weight I put on there. I get that, you know, I get that chalk, chalk. stuff, rub my hands, I'm belt. belt, I'm all this stuff, man, I'm belted up. I grab that bar, I'm like, <laughs> I can't even lift it off the thing. Why? Because I've got the same amount of muscles they have, right? but they've been developing their muscle for all this time, and for them, they can do that. But for me, I can't. But, you know, because I'm around them, what do I try to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, I remember when I first got come into the kingdom of God and, and I first started learning the principles of believing God for finances. And back then, one of the things that, that, was, uh, that people did was after church, everybody went up to dinner together. You know, we'd all, everybody got to a restaurant. Well, now, I'm, I'm like, I didn't, I'm deep poverty, deep poverty. But all the church, you know, and I wanted to be a part of that. And all the churches, they're going out to, you know, somewhere like Chili's, you know. And at the time, I'm like, I wanted to be a part of it, so I went. And I would get there, and I would not have, you know, to have $5 in my pocket. Well, at Chili's, <laughs> you know, with five bucks. You get a drink. You can get a drink or a bowl of queso or something. But, you know, I was living beyond where I was at. Yeah. And there were times, you know, of course, God was so merciful would get there and, and, you know, someone next to me, hey, I want to buy your dinner. You know, I was like, praise God, you know, uh, you know, I'll take the steak. Just yeah, <laughs> no, but you understand. But what I'm saying is I was trying to do, I was trying to live beyond where I was at at that moment. Mm -hmm. I was because everybody else was there. I was trying to live beyond that moment. And how many times even in our faith life? Maybe we're trying to live beyond where our faith is yeah. because maybe somebody else did something. Yeah, you know, that's good. I mean, the good analogy is when you guys were talking and I, this thought just popped into my mind, you know, those power lifters or these men and women that are cut and you go see them in the gym, they had to start somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just didn't one day go up and pick up 450 pounds and start bench pressing. They had to start at the same place you had to start. Exactly. And it's the same thing with faith. Yeah. Mm. We all have some place that we need to start and start small and then you work your yeah, way well, up. You just don't start believing God for $10 million. You, you know what I'm saying? Because well, yeah. it, it ain't going to happen. And mo Well, most people want to walk out and beat Goliath, but they never fought the lion or the bear. Yeah. yeah. You know, David, he fought the lion and the bear and then he walked out and yeah. beat Goliath. Well, and that's like, you know, um, in this church, you know, when we first started this church, my faith, it took all the faith I had to believe God for $100 a week. Right. Extra. You know, I'm talking about believing. See, I was believing God for my, my, norm, my bills to be paid. My house, my, my electric, my stuff, all that stuff. Take care of my kids, my wife, you know, my car payment, all that. I was using my faith for that. To add $100 on top of that, yeah. mm. at the time, that's it huge. almost was overwhelming. Yeah, that's huge. It took every ounce of my faith. <laughs> and, you know, Crystal might have come to me and said, Daryl, we need this. I'm like, I'm, and I, I told Crystal one time. She came and said, Daryl, we need this. I said, Crystal, I'm at the end of where I, what I can believe for. You're going to have to use your faith for that. You're going to have to use your faith to get that because my faith is maxed out right now. In other words, I've maxed out how much I can actually get mm -hmm. power lift, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, I was believing God for all of my needs to be met, plus 
you know, $100 a week to come in to be able to rent the room that we were renting. Mm. Well, then as that started developing, as, my, as that came in week after week, sometimes last minute, you know, sometimes I don't know why God does it, but sometimes he shows up at the very last day, you know, last second. Um, <laughs> never mind. There were times I wrote the check, slid it underneath the door because I'd slide it underneath the pastor's door. Man, yeah. if we ever had time to quit, we would have seen it. I mean, there's times when it's Sunday morning, we need an offering to come to pay the bills, and then we count the offering, and it's not there. Yeah. They go, oh, goodness. And then bills due Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah, like... we'd have, you know, bills due <laughs> and count the offering, and there's $23 in there. Yeah. I'm like, nobody can pastor a church on $23, you know. <laughs> you know, but I wasn't looking at the offering. I was looking to God, and I knew God had told right. me to do this. So my faith is out here working. I'm believing God for $100, you know, on top of everything else I was believing God for. So this is what I'm talking about. At that moment, that wasn't the time to try to believe God for a new car, new house, new job, new this, new that, new this, uh, you know, this and all this stuff. And then sickness would try to come. We'd fight that, you know, different things like that. But I would focus my faith on, okay, we're, we're believing God $100 a week, Lord. I'm asking you for $100 a week, Father. I'm claiming $100 a week. We need that to come in. In Jesus' name, Father, I believe. Lord, you see what I need before I need it. And Lord, I believe that you've given us $100 a week. Now, was God limited to $100 a week? Mm. No. Who was limited? Me, my faith. That's all I could believe for was $100 at the time. Then we knew we, it was time to move. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of people, but we went over to this other building. And, and when she told us, you know, $650 a month, plus electricity, plus water, you know, city, plus all the fees to inspect it, all that stuff, you know, my faith had to go up to where I was having to believe God for $250 a week. You know, I needed $250 a week to come in the offering. That's what I'm believing God for or to come in somewhere. I don't know where it's going to come from. And there were times I'd go down to the mailbox, open it up, and people had been watching online and sent checks that came just at the right time. Mm. Then, you know, all of a sudden, just as quickly as it came, it dried up. Yeah, You know, they, I didn't get any more checks in the mail, but they came when I needed them. Mm. You know, different things would come in. Someone would come in. Someone would, you know, do something or someone would, you know, come in and say, hey, the Lord blessed us. We want to give you this or whatever reason. But I was believing God for that. So we were doing that and, and we started growing from there. Then when we got into this building now, you know, it's up to where, Lord, I, I've got to have, you know, I mean, we've got to have several thousand dollars a week to function here. Mm. You know, we've moved from $100 a week to $250 a week to now where, Lord, I've got to have, you know, several thousand dollars a week to come in to right. pay for everything that we have going on right now. Mm. You know, but I didn't start out here. Right. I started out with the 100. And when God met my need in the 100, and I don't know how, uh, George Mueller was, uh, was a, a missionary. And, uh, when George Mueller, at the beginning of his life, he said it took every ounce of his faith to believe God for one dollar. Every ounce of his faith to believe God for one dollar. At the end of his life, before he passed away, um, George Mueller was believing God for, I think it was a million dollars a year to come in. A mm. million dollars. Now, back, this was back in the early, late 1800s or whatever. You know, million dollars a year back then was what he was his ministry cost. But he said it takes it actually takes me less faith to believe God for a million dollars than it did that original first dollar. Wow. He said it takes me less faith now to believe God because when I was believing for the one dollar, I was just learning how to believe God. Yeah. And I was just learning how to use my faith and how to use my trust and how to how to keep myself calm during that period of time when it didn't look like it was coming. Mm. And it took every ounce of my faith and every ounce of everything in me to, to remain steady, believing God for one dollar to come in. Now, you and I laugh at that, but back then, yeah. you know, to him, that was no laughing matter. He said it took, you know, it took every ounce of his faith and his hope and his, and his love and, and all that stuff to stay steady 
waiting for, you know, believing for that one dollar. He said, but now I believe for a million dollars and it's, it's like I believe God for it and we go on. You know, why? Because he proved God. Did you know that, that, that God tells you in the Bible, the only time God tells you to prove him is where? Money. Money. He says, prove me. Test me. Try me. See if I will not do this for you. Right? And so George Mueller, you know, like I said, he was believing God for one dollar. It took every ounce of his faith. Every ounce of his faith. But a lot of times what happens is, is that we are looking out here to where I need a, you know, I'm believing God for a 10,000 seat auditorium. I don't need to believe for a 10,000 seat auditorium right now. My faith cannot get that right now. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. I know what my faith limitation is. Yeah. That's important. See, people mm -hmm. don't understand that. They're like, well, that's just, un no, it's not unbelief. It's no. reality. I know that right, right now I cannot believe for a 10,000 seat auditorium. Right. Number one, I don't have the faith to believe for it. Number two, I don't have the wisdom to sustain it if we got it. Because it takes more than just me and Lake and Paul to sustain that. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. When you get to that point... I mean, we're almost at the point now where it takes <laughs> more than that. To see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But see what's happened now. My faith is believing God for this, but guess who else's faith is believing for it? Right. Lake, Paul, Caitlin, Austin, Crystal, Josh. You know, all mm -hmm. these different people that are now using their faith. You know what's awesome, though, is the, Im the imagination that's been put in our heart if you go through the, the true founders of this church, the, the stable people, all their imagination and goal is the same. And now all of our faith, even though we don't all have a, as strong a faith to believe for 10,000, but we all have our faith that we're working towards this one goal. Yeah. You know, right now that I think, because I talked to Josh and Caitlin and Austin and Paul, we all have the same goal right same now. Same goal. And, but we're, and we're all using our faith. You know, I, I've been talking to Austin and Josh and even Drew and we're talking about, I believe God is going to do this in this place. Yeah. You know, and we're talking about our faith, you know, in, in areas that I would never expect. But I think it's awesome the imagination is, because when we started this church, I'm sure you did too, but I imagined myself being able to minister to hundreds of people. You know, when I, when I first got born again, I thought, man, it's going to be awesome being able to minister to hundreds of people, you know, thousands of people, yeah. you know, play piano and, you know, lead worship. You know, and then starting off with, Drew, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was it was humbling, but we learned how to sustain ourselves in that moment, yeah. and then we grew to ten people, then but twenty see, people. But look, here's what I want to point out: your faith was to show up and lead worship to Drew, right? Because your faith wasn't looking just at Drew; your faith was looking at the image you had inside of you mm. of the hundreds and the thousands, mm. right? Mm. But your faith has to start working on that where you're at right now, right? But see, what happens is, I'm believing God for 10,000 seats, 10,000 and thousands of people standing before me while I'm preaching the gospel. You know, yeah, that's the great, you have that imagination. But your faith at that moment can't grasp that. See, your faith has to have something to grasp onto. Well, and if you never, if you never work your faith either, you know, I can imagine myself playing piano in front of thousands of people. If I never picked up a keyboard and practice and started working my faith, I would never get that yeah. either. It's the same thing, you know, you have to be, I hate to use the word realistic because God is more than enough, but you have to understand your limits yeah. at where you're at but, and start working yeah. towards that. But now think about this. Everybody that's in here right now, we've got some amazing people, you know, that are working in the children's room. We've got Stephanie, Cinda, Crystal, uh, Adele, you know, Allison, all these people working in the children's room. Then we've got us up here working. We've got the worship team. We've got Austin and Drew and Josh and all these people. Those are all of us working our faith mm. for what we have right now, but not just for what we have right now, but where we see ourselves going. Mm -hmm. mm. But our faith is working right now in what is in front of us, knowing that where we're at now is going to lead to where we're going. Yeah. But everybody, all of our ushers, that's their faith. They're operating by faith. See, people think that faith is that I've got this, you know, Geiger counter of faith. And I'm over here. All right, I've got all this faith now, you know, and then I'm suddenly I'm there. No, faith is doing what is necessary to be done at the moment mm -hmm. to go where you're going. Mm -hmm. 
Faith is dealing with the issue that's in front of you right now. Right now. Not looking at the ends of the earth. The Bible says the eyes of the fool are in the ends of the earth. What's that mean? The eyes of the fool is always looking out there for something. Not realizing that right now is what I've got to deal with. Mm -hmm. well, I think even a perfect example is with this church. You know, when we first started this church, we needed ushers. We needed a worship team. We needed, you know, strong people. We had all of these areas that we needed fill-ins. But we didn't believe God for all of those at once. The first thing that you believed God for was you needed a worship team. A worship team. God brought it. Then we needed a building. God brought it. And we started growing. Right now, our faith as a church is we need an usher group. We need, yeah. that, that's what we're believing God for is a group of ushers. But, you know, we have all of these areas. We needed children's workers. We needed ushers. We, needed, we didn't try to believe God for everything at once. Yeah, because it would have overwhelmed you. Right. It overwhelmed us. And that's what I'm saying. It's like right now my faith cannot grab onto a 10,000-seat auditorium. Right. Right now my faith, when it starts grabbing towards a 1,000-seat auditorium, my faith is already going like, you know, I can feel it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm saying feelings, but you understand what I'm saying. You can, you know, you ever, the only way I know how to describe it is when I was a little kid, we used to run, run around, you know, doing stuff we shouldn't do. <laughs> but we used to go up, up in the Northwest, they had canals. And the canals was how they transferred the water for irrigation. Well, you know, as kids, we'd throw a two by four across the canal to get across the canal to go to the park or whatever. But you get out in the middle, you know, when you first get on that two by four, everything's good. But you get out in the middle and that thing starts going you know, you feel that two by four start doing this underneath your feet. And, you know, you're about 15 feet up in the air and, and all you got is rushing water underneath you and you're walking across to two by four. I mean, we did stupid stuff as kids, okay? But you know what I'm saying? My mom was nowhere to be found. But, you know, here I am, six-year-old kid, watching walking across the two by four across the canal, you know, this huge canal. And you get out in the middle of that two by four and you start feeling it do this. And what are you thinking in your mind? It's going to break. This, thing going, this thing's not holding me up, man. i got to get off this thing. You know, and then, you, you know, it's quick, you know, or I remember get out in the middle of it and realizing you can't walk across it, so you sit down and you're straddling, <laughs> you're just froze there, and you're like, oh, God, oh, God, someone call the fire department. I'm stuck. <laughs> but, you know, but crawling, you know, crawling, you know, grabbing it and crawling across on your stomach, taking it across it. But at the time, you, you felt it. It wasn't there mm -hmm. to uphold you. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with your faith. You can sense when your faith is like, oh, yeah. no, it's not there yeah. yet. It's not yeah. there. You know, um, when we moved into this building, it was like sliding your hand in a glove. It, it just was there. Right. It, just, it was like there was no effort. I well, had no fear. Well, and it was a stretch, too. It like, was a stretch, but there was also a knowing. Right. That... Because, you know, it was, it, and we're not saying that it was, you know, everything was perfect, it was easy. It took faith to get into this building. Yeah. But when the opportunity arose, it was just yeah. easy going. It, and that's why, like, you know, how does this become practical to me or to you? Let's say you're out buying a car and you go look at a car. And you're looking at that car and you get the payment amount and all that stuff. If you sense yourself start going, hmm, right. you might need to back up. And look at that thing and say, okay, should I do this? Because a lot of times what happens is people get out, get out beyond their faith. Mm, they and they, then they start acting foolishly. Then they get in trouble. Yeah. Then they get themselves in trouble. And then they, what do they say? After the cars repossess, what do they say? Well, I tried believing God. That faith stuff don't work. That yeah. prosperity message don't work. Right. No, it works. You just got out beyond it. Yeah. Mm. How many people you can get on, on you know, on the internet today and they're blasting the faith movement because, well, we believed God for this and it didn't work. Well, had you believed God for anything ever? You know, well, we believed God for a brand new home and, and, and we didn't get it. Hey, did you ever believe God to help you pay your rent to begin with? You can't start out buying a $300,000 home by faith when you've never used your faith for a $500 a month apartment. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But what do people do? They're trying to get out beyond what they're actually able to do. And... The best way I know how to describe it is that's moving out into the area of presumption, and it's not the area of faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just assuming something, and that's dangerous ground because when you're out there, you're not actually walking by faith anymore. Now you're out there on assumption. You're mm -hmm. assuming something that's not reality. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I was going to try to get to it today, but the Bible calls it vain imaginations. What's that? What's that? What's a vain imagination? Something that's empty. Yeah. 
In other words, there's nothing that you're basing that imagination on. There's no faith for it. There's nothing that it's, that it's, that it's built on. It's an empty. It's something that's empty. And so you've got to start where you are. If you've never believed God for a pair of socks, how are you going to believe God for a brand new suit? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But see, and here's another thing. Oh, this is, going to be, this is going to hurt a little bit, but that's all right. Some people whip out their credit card and buy something on their credit card and then claim they got it by faith. Right. Your credit card is not living by faith. The world can go whip out a credit card and get it. Put the credit card away. Mm. Believe God for it. And let God bring it in. And here's another thing. This one's going to hurt too. If you're believing God for something, don't get on Facebook and start saying, everybody agree with me. I'm believing God for this. Manipulation. That's manipulation. You're trying to get somebody to see that and say, oh, well, I've got it for you. Right. And then you get on there and say, look, guys, I believe God and got this. No, you didn't. You manipulated. Right. And you're not, listen, the only person you're shortchanging is yourself. Because you really did not use your faith and your faith is not developed. And then when something really does hit you yeah. and nobody's there to help you, you won't be strong enough. You won't be strong enough because you shortchanged yourself by manipulating people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we deal with this. People come up, hey, you know, I want you to pray for me that God's going to, you know, I'm really struggling and I need you to pray with me that God's going to give me a job and help me pay my rent. They're not wanting me to pray with them that God will help them give, give them a job and help them pay their rent. Because if they wanted a job, they could get one. it would only take five minutes to go out and get a job. You can walk into Domino's right now and get a job. Seconds. Seconds. Uh. You can walk into Jack in the Box and have a job within seconds. You can walk into McDonald's and have a job. Well, I'm, that's, that's below me. Then you don't want a job. Right. No, what you want me to do is say, oh, well, how much is your rent? <laughs> That's what you want. Mm. But you're using religious manipulation. Mm. Yeah. You're, well, pray with me that God will give me a job so I can pay my rent. What you really want, what, just be honest and tell me what you're really saying is like, hey, will you help me pay my rent? That's what you're really saying. Right. But you're trying to manipulate me into paying your rent for you. When in reality, what you should say, hey, I'm believing God for this job. Will you agree with me that I get this job? Right. I'll agree with you right now. We can agree on that. Yeah. Right. But don't come to me and say, hey, I'm believing God that God will give me a job. Well, have you applied anywhere? No. But God, I'm believing God's going to give me a job and help me pay my rent. Have you went and put any applications? Nope. Then you're not believing for anything. Mm -hmm. right. And why should I waste my faith that I'm already got it stretched all over the place, believing with you for something that you're not even believing for? Mm. Oh, and this one's going to hurt too. Stop trying to lay your faith responsibilities off onto someone else. Right. Will you pray with me and believe God? No, that's your job. You believe God. Mm. Now we're meddling a little bit, but that's all right. This stuff has to be addressed because this, is, this causes damage. Right. And what it does is it causes people to get a bad taste in their mouth towards faith, towards well, yeah. the things of well, God. And even towards a minister, you know, come up to a minister, ask him to pray for you. They pray for you, but you don't really believe, so you don't get it. And then now you can turn around and blame that minister. Oh, that minister doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, what are you believing? Right. What are you believing? What are you expecting to happen? Mm. You know, we've walked in. I've had people call us to go pray for someone. You know, their son's dying. And I'm going in there. I'm believing God's going to raise that kid up. The kid's, you know, 30 years, 30-some 30 years old, whatever. I'm believing God's going to raise him up. I know I've got the power of God. I know I've got the anointing. I know the Holy Spirit will raise him up. And we walk in the house, and the first thing they say to me, Funeral plans. They start saying, well, we're planning this first funeral and this first funeral and this first funeral. Now come over here and pray the prayer of faith over it. Mm. I'm like, now just to be nice at the time, I went and prayed the prayer of faith and said, okay, I believe he's healed, but I knew in my heart, yeah. no, mark it down, he's going to die. Why? Because they weren't believing nothing. Mm -mm. Yeah. They weren't believing nothing. They had already started planning his funeral. Mm. Oh, we believe, we believe. Okay, did someone call the funeral home and make preparations? He's not even dead yet. <laughs> right. Don't quit the battle until it's, I mean, good God, at least wait till he dies to make funeral plans. Right. You've already, de you're already defeated before he's ever even dead. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
and then tell people, well, pastor came over and prayed and he died. I guess pastors, you know, that stuff pastors preaching don't work because he came over and prayed for our son and he died. You know, blame it on God, blame it on pastor, when the problem is you. Yeah. You didn't believe nothing. You didn't believe nothing. And I don't have authority in your house. Mm -hmm. Right. I have authority in my house. Now we're really meddling. It's good, though. I mean, it's, it's honest truth, and it's what needs to be said if people want to get answers and get deliverance. Because if they are in unbelief, there's nothing a minister can do except for preach the gospel and try to get them in faith. But a minister cannot override your faith. If you don't believe yourself, yeah. you're not going to receive anything. Yeah, and the prayer of agreement is you're supposed to be believing something and I'm supposed to be agreeing with you. Right. Not you don't believe nothing and I got to come in and use all my faith. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Um, that's where you get yourself in trouble is, is uh, Lot. Mm. The story of Abraham and Lot. Now, when you see, see, you found out if someone was on the outside to look at Abraham and Lot when they were together, you saw Abraham and he was blessed. He had all of these herds, all of these cattle, all these flocks. You look at Lot and he's blessed. He's got all of these herds and all of these flocks and all of this stuff, so much so that there wasn't enough ground to feed them all that they were fighting with each other. Right? Mm -hmm. So what happened? Lot and them get in strife with Abraham. Abraham says, listen, I don't want strife. Let's, let's separate. You know, you take the best land, I'll take whatever's left. Flash ahead a year, and you see Abraham and Lot again, and what do you see? Abraham with all the blessing, with all of these flocks and all of these herds, and you see Lot down in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he doesn't have nothing. Right. Well, Lot thought too highly of his faith. He was living in a rented house in the city of sin. Mm. Obviously, you could see from that that Lot's blessing was coming from, his, from Abraham's faith, right. not from his own faith. Right. He was relying on Abraham to believe God for everything. Mm -hmm. right. so, the ne so when they separated, the next time you see Lot, he has nothing. Why? Mm -hmm. He had no faith of his own. Yeah. Mm. He had no faith of his own. Not only did he not have any flocks, he didn't have any servants. He had nothing. He was living in a rented house in Sodom and Gomorrah. So you see that when they separated, that Lot's faith was not. He had no faith. He was leaning on Abraham's faith. Mm. How many people are leaning on someone else's faith? Right. There, how many husbands are, are relying on their wife to do their praying for them? Mm -hmm. mm. How many kids are relying on their parents to do their praying for them? Our kids used to do that. Come in there. I'm, I'm not feeling well. And we'd pray and believe God. Come there. I'm not, there come a point where I said, you need to believe God for this. Mm. You need to believe God for your own healing. Because there has to come a point when you get to a certain age where you're going to move out and I can't do your believing no more. That's right. Well, the first time I believed God was for a suit. Because I came to you and I said, Dad, I need a new suit. And you said, okay, use your faith. <laughs> and I said, well, I guess I have to if you're not getting me one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you said, I thought I was using my faith. Yeah. I was coming to you telling you I was believing God for a suit. <laughs> you know, Lake comes to me, Dad, nice suit. I'm believing God for a suit just like that. Yeah. If the Lord ever puts on your heart to give me that suit. <laughs> here's my number. Here's my number. <laughs> you know, but that's what I'm saying. That's the kind of games that people play. Uh. But Lot's faith was based, Lot's faith was on Abraham's faith. And what's interesting about that story is Lot, I feel like genuinely Lot felt like it was partly his blessing too because that's yeah. the only reason why he would leave. He felt like he was some great man of faith and that's why he was getting blessed. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, I'll take my sheep because I can do this by myself. I don't need your faith. And the next thing you know, he's living in poverty. And you see what kind of faith Lot really had when, when you see him later on and he has nothing. Right. He's living in a house down in Sin City to where the whole city's in sin and his own wife turns back. You know, his children get him drunk you know, yeah. <laughs> and try to con and conceive by him, you know, commits incest. That is all the result of the faith of Lot. Mm. You saw what faith Lot had when he was separated from Abraham. But you see Abraham, what's he doing? He's getting better and better and increasing more and more and more. That's the same thing true with any child of God. Any child of God that has their own faith, they may start out small. They will start out. As a matter of fact, they may, it's not that you may. You will start out small. 
That's why the Bible says don't despise the days of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. But He will increase you more and more and mm -hmm. more and more. Well, and we're saying this by experience. We've seen people that get connected to this ministry, and while they're here, they're blessed. And for some odd reason, like Lot, maybe they get offended, but they detach, and you see them six, seven months later, and they're living worse than when they first started here. Yeah. You know, and, and it's sad to say, but it's true. But that's why here at Impact Christian Center, we're trying to develop you to use your own faith yeah. and not manipulate you for your money and say lean on our faith. We're saying develop your own faith for yourself and grow. Yeah, you can believe God. Right. But it all starts with, with number one, it starts with an imagination. Mm -hmm. It starts with a hope. You've got to have a picture in your mind. And what, what you've got to be very careful of is number one, that you're not trying to believe for too many things at one time. That's the first thing we talked about. Number two, that you're not trying to believe for something that's beyond what you can actually believe for. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can't lift 350 pounds, I'm not going to try to lift it. What am I going to do, though? I'm going to start by lifting 150 pounds. I'll start where I'm at and work my way up. And then number three, you have to be careful that you're not relying on someone else to do your believing for you. Mm -hmm. mm. You know what's awesome? We don't have any notes for this, but the Holy Spirit just yeah. led this. See, it's important that, number one, you're not trying to use your faith for too many things. Yeah. And you're not trying to use your imagination for too many different things. You've got to centralize the vision. What's that mean? You've got to get a single focus. A single focus. Focus in on something and, and get your eyes on a single idea. You know, maybe that idea is to be a business owner. Focus in on that. How much time do we have left? Uh, yeah, 10 minutes. Okay. But I'll also say, too, because we say, you know, we're saying don't be, you know, don't believe something that you can't really believe for. Nothing's impossible for him who believes. I say imagine big, but then take the steps to get to where yeah, you're exactly. imagining. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, shoot you for can, the big. You can imagine yourself preaching to a 10,000 seat auditorium, but you know right now I'm not there, so I need to take the steps to or, get there. you know, yeah. don't sit there at your house and say, well, I believe God's given me a million dollars. Right, exactly. If No, start out, Father, I'm asking you for 10 extra dollars this week. Mm. Father, I'm asking you for... And you should always be increasing mm. because He wants you to increase. Believe God for 10 extra dollars to come in from somewhere. Maybe to be on your paycheck. You know how exciting it'll be for you if you sit down and on purpose, and that's another thing too, be specific yeah. in your requests. Right. How many times do we not get what we're asking for because he said you have not, because yeah. you asked not? Be specific. How will you know if you got what you're believing for if you don't ask for something specifically? Mm -hmm. So sit down and ask God, say, Father, I'm asking you for 10 extra dollars this week to come in. I'm asking you for 10 extra dollars. I believe you today, Father, that you're giving me 10 extra dollars in Jesus' name. And then when that 10 extra dollars comes in, now don't get so caught up, and that's nothing, don't get tunnel vision. Mm. How many people get tunnel vision in their faith is like, I'm believing for $10, and when $10 comes in, I believe I got it. And the whole time, here comes 50 cents over here, mm -hmm. mm. but you just throw it in the car. Here comes an extra dollar over here, and you go and buy yourself a Slurpee. And then at the end of the week, the $10, you didn't get a $10 lump sum. And what do you say? Well, that didn't work. Right. No, 50 cents. If you'd count that 50 cents that came in over here, that dollar came in over here, the 30 cents that came in over here, the 75 cents came in over here. Yeah. When God brought them meat or he brought them manna, he brought it from everywhere. He brought it from everywhere. It rained down on them. They just had to go out and gather it up. But you know what that God did not do? He did not rain down on them loaves of bread. Right. Mm. You know, they had to go out and get the manna, and then they had to make the cake. Yeah. God's not going to rain down cakes from heaven on you. He's going to rain down the provision. You go get it, and then you start putting it together, and you realize it's what you're believing for. Mm -hmm. But what do we get? We get tunnel vision. And we say, I'm believing for $10. Well, an extra dollar comes in, and I, I stopped and got me a Mars bar or a Snickers bar. And then I believe for, you know, and then 50 cents extra, someone just, hey, you know, keep the change. And there was 50 cents extra that was given you. You stop by the Coke machine and drop it in there. If you're believing God for specifically believing for 10 extra dollars, don't do that. Take that dollar, put it in a jar. Take that 50 cents, put it in a jar. Take that extra money that you get, start putting it in a jar, and then at the end of the week, pour it out, count it, and you know what you're going to realize you got? Not mm -hmm. just $10, you'll realize you got 11 Well, the, if I'm being honest, that's what I did in my life is, you know, 
with the, me with Adele and I, we were gonna move into. I was looking at how much money I had coming in, and I was going, I don't have enough money to get into these apartments that I want to get into. I'm gonna settle for some lesser ones because I don't think I ha I make enough money. And it cost you, didn't it? Oh yeah, but. I started to reevaluate and realize how much money I was spending on things that I didn't need. And then I started to go through and think, I have, God has provided me plenty of money. I'm just spending it on things that I don't need. And as I went through and reevaluated my spending, I make more than enough. We moved into these beautiful apartments. <laughs> me and Adele have more than enough left. We make more than enough money. Now I'm thinking we were just blowing it on stupid stuff. I know, but Adele's <laughs> like, what do you mean? I don't, I need that taco casa. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I, you know, and so as I went through and we, I've gotten control over that and we've cut the the irresponsible spending. We have more yeah. than enough. You know, and I'm believing God, God, I I believe I wish I could get into these apartments and the whole time God had already provided for me more than enough. I was just spending. Yeah. So if you're believing God, be specific. If you got a vision, a dream or an imagination, be specific on what you are okay, God, I'm asking you for ten extra dollars or you know, or a hundred extra Lord, I'm asking you for a hundred extra dollars to come in this month or this week or whatever. And you're, if you can believe God for that, then the first thing you do, you want 100 extra dollars. Be specific that that's what you want. Go find scriptures that promise you what you're believing for. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. faith, faith comes by hearing the word. You can't believe for 100 extra dollars if you don't know that God told you he'd give it to you. Right. Go find the scripture that God promised he would give it to you. There's lots of them in there. Mm -hmm. Then obey whatever the scripture told you to do to get that extra, which normally means to give. Then be specific, but don't get tunnel vision and start thinking, all right, when someone's going to walk up and give me a $100 bill. Well, they might. Or you might get $5 here, $10 over here, $15 over here. Don't just blow that because it comes in. You know, don't get five extra dollars in your pocket and think, oh, I'm going to stop by Jack in the Box. I got five extra bucks. No, yeah. put that away. That way you can see, because at the end of the week when you count it, I promise you that not only will God give you what you're asking for, but he'll also give you the tithe on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I said if you ask for 10, he'll give you 11. Because every time I've ever believed God for any finances, not only did he give me what I needed, he's always given me enough to pay tithe on it. Mm. Always. Yeah. Why? Because he gives seed to the sower. Mm -hmm. Right? So it'll come in. Just do it just so you can understand. But when you count it and it's all there at the end of the week, it's going to strengthen you. And Jesus, what did, the, what did Jesus say? Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Mm -hmm. How much time we got? Four minutes. Okay. He said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. What happens when you see your faith work? Yeah. It gives you joy. And yeah. what does joy do? Yeah. It creates strength. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then what do you do? Man, I believed God for $10 and that came in. Yeah. Lord, I'm asking for 20 extra dollars this week. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I know you gave me the 10. You'll give me the 20. It also creates assurance. Assurance. And with assurance comes more faith. Yep. And yeah. then it becomes easier to believe, even though you're believing for more. Yeah. Because you know what he did. That's what David said. I beat the lion and the bear. I can beat you. He was very confident yeah. in what God would do because of the experiences that he but had. But you have him. to be specific. If you're not specific, you won't know if you got what you believe for or not. Yeah. You're actually not even believing for anything. Yeah. Honestly, if you're not specific, if you, just, you know, people come up, well, just pray God bless me. All right, with what? I don't know. Just I just want God to bless me. Bless you. This is one of my pet peeves. I have an unspoken prayer request. I want you all to pray with me. I'm not. Right. I'm not wasting my time praying over something. I have no clue what I'm praying for. Your unspoken request may be that God give you the ability to rob a bank. I don't know. Well, Kenneth Hagin tells it this way. It's funny. He would go up to his members and say, what are you praying for? And they'd say, oh, nothing in particular. He said, well, that's exactly what you're going to receive, nothing in particular. Yep. You're going to get what you're praying for. you got to get specific. I have specific amounts of money that I believe God for and call into this church every Amen. week, every day. I call in a certain amount. We hit that amount. You know what I did? I raised it up. I started right. calling in more. Well, you want more money? Yes. You know why? We can do more. Money equals souls. Yeah. Right. The more money we have, the more souls we can reach. Mm -hmm. The more TV we can do. The more broadcasts we can do. The more ministries we can put on staff. The more stuff we can do. The bigger buildings we can get. The better outreaches we can do. Right. The better, more stuff we can do in the youth programs. The more people we can help. Ultimately. More people we can help. Youth outreaches. We want to do youth outreaches. That takes money. Oh, yeah. You know, we want to do, you know, different stuff. We want to be able to, this next year, and I, we're about to close. This next year, I am believing, God, that we're going to be able to send at least 25 youth to camp mm. and send the kids to camp that if they can't pay for it, we're able to do it. 
Yeah. That you know how much money that is though? Right. That's a lot of money. We're looking at 200, 250 bucks a, a year. 300 dollars a kid. Yeah. So let's say that's 25 kids. You know, you're looking at you're looking at a couple thousand dollars. Right. You know, that's I'm believing God because we want to start we want to send these kids that are from communities that maybe their parents can't afford to send them to camp. Yeah. The best thing that ever happened to my kids was sending them down to camp because mm -hmm. mm. it changed their life. I want them to go experience that because some of these kids, these inner city kids, they've never experienced anything like that. And that may be the only time they ever get to experience anything mm. like that. I want to be able to send, we're believing God as a church, I want to send 20 to 20, 25 kids next year. We're going to get that, we got that. We're, how much time do I got? Like 10 seconds. Oh, we believed God for the funny money for the, to put all, to dump into this bus to get that bus ready to do that. See, my faith is working right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we bought.